Hello class, welcome to lab 2, alternative 4, installing Ubuntu using Ubuntu server. Who is this lab for? Well, this lab is for anyone who attempted lab 2, alternative 3, installing Ubuntu for underpowered PCs and Macs, but had an issue when installing the operating system. During the installation process, the installer froze, or it took too long, or it never worked, any technical issues that you had there. So this lab is for those people. Now, this should be your an, a last try. You shouldn't come to this one by default. If you have an underpowered PC, you should try this lab first, right? If you have an M1 Mac, you should try this lab. For everybody else, you should try the default lab. That means your computer meets the minimum requirements for the class. With that said, I assume that you already attempted lab number two, so you already understand the resources requirements and all of that, and you already have a step one done, which is, you install VirtualBox, you install the extension pack, and you already have the Microsoft Visual C++ redistributable in your system. Like you are ready to create a VM. That's what I'm assuming because I already have VirtualBox installed and the extension pack installed. However, there are videos over here on how to do it just in case. Now, we need the ISO file for Ubuntu server. All you have to do is click on the link here and click on download Ubuntu server. I, the download file, the ISO file will start downloading automatically. I already have it in my system, so I'm gonna cancel this. Once that is downloaded, then you can continue with the lab. Let me go back here, let me go back again and move on. Let's create a virtual machine. So first of all, I'm gonna delete this one because this came out wrong. Right, and now let me create a new VM. I'm gonna call this Ubuntu Desktop. Now I'm gonna add something else over here, 22.04 obviously. I'm gonna add something over here in the parentheses. You do not need to do this. I do it just alternative four. I do this because eventually if you reach out to me for help, I need to know which VM to start on. Now, when you click on ISO image, click on the arrow over here, click on other, and find the one that says Ubuntu 22.04 live server. Again, live server, that's the one that you need. Click on open and please click on a skip on attended installation. Make sure you click this because otherwise you're gonna have problems in the future. Click on next, click on next. Here we're gonna change this to 40. Then click on next, click on finish. Click on settings, advanced, set this to bidirectional. In the description here, we're gonna type the name of our virtual machine, which is gonna be CIS106. The username, because it's, this is gonna be our Blackboard username. You're welcome to type anything else over there, but make sure you remember it. And then the password, which is gonna be something simple. This is just notes for us. Again, these are notes for us, so that we can troubleshoot later. In system, I am gonna disable floppy. In display, I'm gonna increase it all the way to 128, and I'm gonna enable 3D acceleration. Storage, we leave it as is. Audio, we disable it, and then we click on OK. Then click on Start. Click inside the virtual machine and press Enter. Now let me make this screen a little bigger, just in case, um, you know, let me show you how to do it, just in case you're having problems reading along, but let me also do it for, sake, for the sake of the video. Click on view, virtual screen one, and then I'm gonna increase it to 150. We are in a step number three, installing Ubuntu, good. Now, I'm gonna move along briefly on the installation, but there are steps here laid out, one after each other. So if you get lost at any point, revert back, refer back to the instructions. Select your language, let me click inside, press enter. Now we're gonna click on update to the new installer. This should be very briefly. Here click on done, just press enter. We are going to install Ubuntu server, so we, the default option is correct. Click on done, and here click on done as well. 
click on done here as well. I mean, press enter, obviously, because we don't have a mouse. Wait until the mirror location testing goes uh, finishes. And it seems like it's done. So I'm gonna click on done here. I'm gonna press the tab key on my keyboard to move along the options until I get to done. Here, just enter again on done. Arrow key down to continue and enter. Your name, here I like to put my username. I don't like to put my just my name, my username. That's my preference. Your server name, this is the computer name we said we were gonna use earlier, so CIS106. My username, which is the same as above, and my password. Then here, when you're in done, press enter. We're not gonna use Ubuntu Pro, so you're good to continue. Press the space bar to select install OpenSSH and then the tab key until you reach done. We are not gonna use any microservice at all, none of them. So press the tab key and done. Now, this is gonna take about 10 minutes to complete, so go grab a cup of coffee. Okay, now that the installation has completed, we're gonna reboot our machine. Click inside your virtual machine, press the tab, the tab key, and then move back to reboot now. By the way, my computer took about seven minutes, your can take between 12 to 15, more or less, give or take. When you see this message here, simply press enter. Now we're gonna put the instructions next side by side. And we're gonna move along to a step number four. Okay, now let's sign in, type your username. and then your password. Now we're gonna do an update, sudo apt update to ampersand signs and then sudo apt upgrade minus y. Double check your, double, uh, double check your spelling, make sure it's spelled just like the instructions over here and then press enter. Type your password and uh, I don't know, give it about five to 10 minutes for the update to complete. When you get to this screen over here, which all you have to do is tab and then press uh, the space bar and you're done. The update has completed. Now let's install a desktop environment. So sudo apt install ubuntu. I'm gonna press the tab key so that I can use tab auto completion. It's gonna help me with the spelling. And then de for desktop, perfect. And now we're gonna do uh, genome session flashback and finally light dm hyphen or minus y double check your spelling before you press enter if your spelling is correct every word is typed correctly and it should be if you use tab out of completion like i did press enter over here this is gonna take a while Look at all the packages that are going to be downloaded and installed into your system. It's going to take about 25 minutes to complete, double the time that the installation took, because it's a lot of packages that are going to get installed. So I'm going to pause the video and I'll come back once I'm ready to continue. When you get to this screen, make sure to select Light DM. So click in your virtual machine, down, tab, space. Okay, so when you get to this screen over here, again, let's click inside the virtual machine, press the tab key, and then a space. And the, inst the installation of the desktop environment is already complete. We're gonna reboot the machine and we're gonna sign into our graphical environment. By the way, this took about 38 minutes. So yeah, this takes a while. Sudo reboot now. Let's move the, this to step number five, but from this point on, we'll do everything inside the virtual machine.
Okay, now here, type your password. But before you click sign in, click on the Ubuntu icon over here and then select Gnome Metacity, Gnome Flashback Metacity. Again, click on the icon over here, Gnome Flashback Metacity. Press enter. And now we are uh, introduced to the Ubuntu system. Um, here we're just gonna close this. Let's minimize it for now. The next step is to install the guest additions. So click on input, devices, insert guest addition CD. Right click on this, on maximize. Now let's see if it's small enough. Yeah, small enough. Because we wanna make sure that we finish this, that we do this. Click on okay here, that was a mistake on my part. There you go. Start setup. Uh, typing the English default, that's good. Privacy default, start using Ubuntu, good. Now open a file manager. Click on VirtualBox guest additions right over here at the disk, right click on an empty area and click on open in terminal. Over here type sudo period forward slash uppercase V as in Victor, B as in boy, press the tab key for autocomplete, L and then press the tab key again. Make sure that you're spelling everything correctly and press enter. Type your password. And this is gonna take about two to three minutes, give or take. What this is gonna do is, this is gonna allow us to use the full screen of our monitor, right? So if you try to use full screen without having the guest additions installed, the screen is gonna remain, remain small. And we don't want that. Almost done. and it finished. Now let's do a quick restart. Now um, I am gonna close this um, Chrome window on my computer and we're gonna do everything inside the virtual machine just to make our lives a little bit easier because there are some other packages that we need to install and some others that we need to remove. That is weird. This, this, okay. Let me wait until it's done. This should have started. Uh, this should have started uh, the display manager. Okay, there you go. Good, 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 good. I sometimes I forget I'm dealing with a, a, a low resources virtual machine. Okay, so let's sign in over here. And now let's just maximize our build to a box window. See, now I can use the full screen, which is good. Uh, so click on applications, then click on internet, and then click on Firefox. All your programs are gonna be accessible via this applications icon here. And if you wanna open the settings, you can click over here. And also this icon is for turning the computer off as well. So if you click here, you're gonna see a bunch of options, including shutdown, restart, and suspend. Now we can close this and simply type cis106.com and click on lab2 installing Ubuntu using Ubuntu server. We're going to scroll down until the step number five. We finished with the guest additions. Now we're going to install and remove some softwares that we, that we don't need. But we're going to do this in a, a bit of a faster way. We're going to create a small script and then run the script that will do all of this for us. And that way we don't have to come here, copy and paste, copy and paste and all of that. So to do that, click on applications, accessories, and then click on text editor. Again, that was applications, accessories, and then text editor. Copy this, paste it here. Copy this and paste it here. 
Now click on save, call it a script.sh. Make sure you're saving it inside home right over here. Now we can close this text editor. Let's click on applications, system tools, and then terminal. And over here, we're going to type bash and then script.sh. And that is going to take care of running all of those commands one after each other. Type your password. And that's it. This is going to take about 10, 10, 10, 15 minutes, more or less, probably less. Okay, so the package is finished installing. It took about 10 minutes, like I said earlier. Now let's move along. Now we're going to install another set of package. It's called uh, Ubuntu Restricted Extracts, but these ones are going to be very, very quick. Because these are the small ones. When you get to this screen, press the tab key to select OK, spacebar, yes, spacebar again, and you're done. Okay, it's done. Let's move this out of the way and let's continue scrolling over here. Replace the current screenshot tool with Flameshot. Okay, so how do we do that? Let me close the terminal because I don't need it right now. Applications, graphics. This is the application I'm talking about. It's called Flameshot and you use it to take a screenshots. For example, click over here, take a screenshot, select the area of the window, select the area of the screen that you want. And then here you can save it whatever you want or you can copy it to the clipboard. And then you have all of those amazing tools over here. There's a video on the channel about using Flameshot if you are interested. Now, what we want to do is that we want to map this tool to the print screen key on the keyboard or any other key combination in your keyboard that you like so that when we're, take, when we're working on the terminal and we need to take a screenshot, it is just a key press in the keyboard and we are more efficient that way. Here is uh, an image showing you how to do it, and here are instructions, so let's follow them. Click on Applications, System Tool, um, and then here click on Preferences, and then click on Settings. Or you can click on the gears icon at the top, and then click on System Settings. Either or, it's going to take you to the same place. Click on the magnifying glass at the top, and then type Key. Then click on Keyboard, then click on View and Customize Shortcuts. Scroll down and click on custom shortcuts. Click on add shortcut and then here let's spell things correctly. Flame shot. And the command is flame shot GUI. Now let's click on set shortcut. And then once we click on set shortcut, all we have to do over here is simply press the key in the keyboard that we want to map to this application. Now, if you are on a Mac, you probably, I don't know if you're going to have a print, print screen key or not. If you don't, select a key combination like Alt, Control, 1, 2, 3, whatever you want. If you're on a PC, you definitely have a print screen key on your keyboard, so let's just press it now. Notice that it's going to tell you, tell you that it's going to replace the current tool with this one, and we're going to click on Replace. Sometimes you need to do this twice to get it to work. And it seems to be like this is one of those times. So I'm going to click on it. Remove it and add it one more time. And it's working. Perfect. Press the space the space key to exit. And now we can close this, close that, close this, and move along. Now we need to set up Git and GitHub. So go to github.com and sign into your GitHub account. I'm gonna pause the video, sign into my account, and then move on from there. Okay, I signed into my GitHub account, so now let's click on our repository over here. Actually, let's not click that yet. We have a couple of steps we need to follow and commands that we need to copy. 
but it's very common to make mistakes in this part so what we're gonna do is that we're gonna open a text editor we're gonna paste the commands here modify them here and then paste it on our terminal so we're gonna copy this one and then we're gonna copy this one and then this one as well so here goes your username here is my username so I'm just gonna copy this and I'm just gonna paste it here so here is my username and here is my email address so my email address is this one here this is the email address that I use to sign in to github I had a typo there so let's make sure I fix that at gmail.com as you can see username make sure it's spelled correctly email make sure it's spelled correctly so now here you're gonna put your email as well so I'm just gonna copy it from here and I'm gonna paste it over here again we're doing it this way to avoid typos so click on application system tools then open your terminal let me put it on the side copy the first command press enter actually there was a mistake there good now it's done correctly copy the next command paste it here and then copy the last command and paste it here here just press enter now if you want extra security and add a passphrase that's fine but this is a testing environment this is a labbing environment I'm not gonna add a passphrase so I'm just gonna press enter enter again and we're done with that part now we need to get our SSH key so the public SSH key so click on copy then paste it in your terminal here by the way your open applications appear at the bottom over here just keep that in mind press enter and copy these lines here now go to your github account click on your um, your profile icon then click on settings then over here you're gonna click on SSH and GPG keys click on new key give it a name for example I'm gonna call this Ubuntu VM and then paste it over here make sure there are no trailing spaces like there is over here so I'm gonna delete that trailing space this should be one single line with no spaces after or before just like you see it over here add key and now we're gonna copy this command and we're gonna paste it in our terminal this is gonna test our SSH key so we're gonna type yes the whole word here and you should see a message like this if you see a different message or an error message you did something wrong check your spelling start from the beginning all the way till the end check your spelling you did something wrong okay so now we can close this actually let's leave a terminal open because I believe the next step is to yeah clone our repository so I'm gonna copy this command and paste it in my terminal over here notice that here it says your github username slash your repository name and that is exactly what we have over here so I'm gonna cut it and paste it right after the two dots so your command should look like this except that it's gonna have your username and your repo name over here copy this command and then paste it in your terminal now you have your github repository in your computer so if you go to places and then click on home you're gonna notice that there is a cis 106 folder that is a one-to-one -one copy of your github repo and that's exactly what we want because we are gonna do everything from our virtual machine from this point on not using the, the, the web application anymore not up importing things not up, not uploading things via the web everything via the command line from this point on so we're gonna cut this gonna sorry we're gonna close that and then we are ready up oh, sorry we missed one crucial step let's install VS code and this is the part when our virtual machine is gonna struggle because VS code is a very heavy application so we're gonna go to VS code let me close some things that I don't need uh, I'm gonna save this document because I'm gonna open it later again I'm gonna put it in my documents and I'm gonna call this git uh, cheat cheat Oops. cheat 
sheet.txt. Eventually, you're going to come back to this command. So you want to have them saved somewhere. So we're going to close that, click on download, and then click on .deb. Again, this is the one that you need, .deb, and it will download this package here. Now, we're going to close this terminal, open a file manager, go to downloads, right click in an empty area and click on opening terminal. Here you're going to type the following command sudo apt install period forward slash c as in carlos and then just simply use the tab key for autocomplete press enter and then type your password this is going to take care of installing vs code for us Installation is almost done. Let me save some memory and close this tab because I don't need it. Uh, I don't need this tab open at the, at the particular moment, so I'm going to close it. I don't need the file manager open, so I'm going to close it. Okay, now the VS Code has successfully been installed. We are going to close the terminal. We do not need it open anymore. And we are going to open VS Code. There, has, there is a couple. We need to install all of these extensions over here. So we're going to click on Applications, Programming, and Open Visual Studio Code. Wait until VS Code opens completely. Still loading. And it finished. So click on extensions. And here I'm going to type mark down. So I need this one over here. I need this one. I need this one. And I need this one. Let's wait until those four are installed because we need to search for a couple more. Okay, now let's search spell checker. And this one is the mandatory. It's just we're gonna be typing a lot in VS Code, so it's good to have a spell checker. So if you don't if you don't need it, you don't install it. Then we, we need live server because at some point we're gonna be previewing some HTML. So we need it. And we are done. We have pretty much all the packages installed. Oops, we need one more which is called PDF preview. I totally forgot about that one. Let's wait until this is done installing. And it's done. So now let's do PDF preview and click on install. That is completely done. Now we're going to close VS Code. We're going to go back to it later, but not now. Now we need to submit this lab. Now my GitHub repository looks very different from yours. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to make it look as close to yours as possible by creating a mess out of it. Because right now, my GitHub repository has everything organized in folders because I, this is the fourth time that I complete this lab in a video. So let me mess it up a little bit and then I can show you exactly what I mean. So I'm going to pause the video while I do that and then come back once that's done. Okay, so now my GitHub repository looks very similar to yours. All the files are in, a, in one single folder. There is no organization whatsoever. And I am going to show it to you in VS Code as well. 
So if I open my repo, notice that everything is just no folders, no organization. We're going to fix this because we want to have our repository organized because this is going to grow as the semester moves along. We need these folders here, right? This one is going to be empty and this one is going to be empty now. So if you don't want to make it, that's fine. So here I have labs. Here I have week reports. And I also have one of the cheat sheets. So cheat sheets. Okay, so this photo, github.png and slack.png were from the week report. And I have week report one, week report one, week report two, and week report two because I finished them already. So let's gonna move them into the week reports folder. Essentially anything related to the week report, put it in the week reports folder. Now, all of the rest of the stuff here, by the way, I'm doing this by pressing the control key on my keyboard and then clicking on the files that I want to select. All of this goes to labs. And now this cheat sheet goes inside the cheat sheets. Now I am going to open labs and here I'm going to create one folder called lab one. All of these files are from lab one. So I'm just going to select all. You can do it by doing control A, right? So control A, then control and click on the folder you don't want to select and then move everything to lab number one. Now we're going to create a new folder called lab two, because this is where all of my files for lab two will be. Now I'm going to go to week reports and I'm going to put everything in the right in its right place. So WR1 is for week report one. WR2 is for week report two. So I know GitHub, Slack, WR1.md and WR1.pdf go into week report one. Then these two go into week report number two. Perfect. Now I can close this file manager and I can open VS Code. So click on Applications, Programming, and then Visual Studio Code. Now we are going to open our GitHub repository. Let me use full screen real quick. Click on Open Folder. Then click on CIS 106 once. Click once to select it. Then click on Open. And you have successfully opened your repository in VS Code. Now click on Labs, click on Lab number two, and then click on Create New File. Call this Lab2.md. Now in here in, in Firefox, I already gave you the markdown that you're going to use. So copy this and paste it over here. Save your file, File, Save. And now we need to take these two screenshots. So for the time being, I'm just going to close VS Code because I don't need it open. I want to save memory. So I need to take a screenshot of this application called NeoFetch, which has already been installed in your system. So click on Applications, System Tools, and Terminal. Type NeoFetch. Take a screenshot of this. So we are going to press Print Screen. Or you can launch the application manually if you like. Now click on the save button over here, the floppy disk. And you're going to place this inside your lab2 folder. So let's go home, CIS106, labs, lab2. Call this file neofetch.png. Click on save. Now we are going to take, we're going to copy this command over here and paste it in our terminal. Before we do that, let's clear the screen. By the way, the command was clear. And let's paste it. Press enter and take a screenshot. Again, if you want to do this manually, let me show you. Just click on the flame shot icon and click on take a screenshot. And it will launch flame shot manually without you having to press the print screen key. Now click on the save icon and you're going to call this a script that png make sure you save it inside lab number two click on save close your terminal you don't need it anymore click on applications programming and vs code wait until vs code loads completely you already have the cis 106 folder open 
Make sure that lab2.md and the two screenshots that you that you saved are in the same folder as they are over here. Make sure the spelling is correct, neofetch.png, script.png. Now let's do a preview, right click and do preview. The screenshots are there, that's perfectly fine. Now let's convert this to PDF, right click and then click on export to PDF. The first time that you run it, it's gonna take an extra minute because it needs to do the configuration on the extension and things like that. Seems like it didn't trigger. Let me try one more time. This was what I was saying when I said that VS Code was it's gonna be slow. Ah. Uh. Oh. Right here, it's installing Chromium, that's why. Let's wait until this part of here says installing Chromium is done. Seems to be a stock, so I'm gonna close VS Code and open one more time. Okay. Right click. Oh, right here. Installing Chromium. That's the message that I was expecting to see earlier. We need to wait until that's done. Wow, it's taking a sweet time. Wow, this is taking too long. We're gonna do this manually. Click on Applications, System Tools, and then Terminal. Type sudo apt install chromium browser. Yeah, this is much faster. And it finished. So now we need to do where is Chromium? Is this called Chromium on its own? Yeah, Chromium. And we need to copy this path here. Now let's open VS Code. Again, I'm closing my terminal because I don't need it open anymore. And let's click on, let's wait until it finished loading. There you go. Now we're gonna click on the Jira's icon over here. And we're gonna click on the Jira's icon over here again. And click on extension settings. We're gonna scroll down to where it says, where is it, where are you? Right here, markdown PDF executable paste the path over here okay it's done now we're gonna close the settings close this and then right click and click on export to PDF this should make it quicker oh 
Oh god, this is taking sweet time. Let me see if I can cancel that process. Markdown PDF. Let's disable it. Reload. Perfect. Now let's go back to the extension. Type markdown. and click over here and let's click on enable now let's go back to the file and try to run it one more time there you go exporting to PDF finally wow perfect our PDF file is already generated and we have our two images there we're ready to send these changes to github we're ready to push so click on terminal and new terminal over here you're gonna type the following commands git pull git add period git commit minus m lab to finish this is the label that these changes are gonna get and finally git push now if you go to your web browser and you go to your github page let's go to our repository and you go to labs first of all notice that it's already organized here because we did it in the computer and we push the changes to github click on labs click on lab 2 and click on lab2.md this is the URL that you're gonna give me in Blackboard. This URL over here to this file. So you're gonna give me this URL and you are going to upload the PDF file to Blackboard. Again, the PDF file, you're gonna upload it to Blackboard and the URL to Blackboard as well in the same submission. Now, notice that I gave you a special note over here. I want you to copy this and put it in your notes for github your git notes that we uh, created earlier because these git commands you're gonna run it all the time to send your changes to github please read it please remember them please have them handy they are important so I'm gonna close VS code because it's not needed I don't need it anymore I don't need my terminal anymore once you submit your assignment, you're not going to need the web browser open anymore either. So go to Applications, Accessories, and then go to Text Editor. Click on Open. And notice that here you're going to find, in your recent files, the document that we were working in. So I'm going to paste this over here. Just make sure to leave some space to make it easier to read. Here I'm gonna put a comment, uh, git config commands, and here is generate SSH key. All right? Command to clone my own repository. Repository. Click on save. And remember, you have these commands over here saved, so whenever you need to remember them, just go, open the text file, and read it. Close this. And now, we're not done. We're going to turn this computer off, click on the gears icon at the top, and then click on shut down. Shut down. Just wait until the VM turns off completely. Now, open your VirtualBox Manager. And then right click on the hamburger menu over here 
and then click on a snapshot. So we're gonna take a snapshot. A snapshot is a point in time in our virtual machine. It will allow us to revert back to that state if the, comp if the machine breaks. Now, we're gonna be taking a snapshots periodically, pretty much after every lap or after every two laps, depending on how things go. This is very important because if the VM breaks in the middle of the semester, you don't need to redo the whole thing again. You can go back to a, previous, to a previously non-good state. So we're gonna call this lab two complete. Click on okay. And remember, always take a snapshots with your virtual machine turned off. Now, you complete a lab number two, just have patience with this virtual machine. If you have any questions, it's like me. If you're encountering issues, it's like me. I'm a, I am one message away. Take care. See you in class.